started, we will make a slip knot. Then we will chain 26 chains. So next I'm going to yarn over and as you can see the chain on the hook doesn't count so we're going to skip one stitch and go into the next one and do a half double crochet. And we are just going to place one half double crochet into each stitch all the way until the end of the chain. So once you're finished, you should have a total of 24 half double crochets. So for row number two, we will just chain one and then we will turn our work around, yarn over and do one half double crochet into that same stitch. And then we will do another half double crochet into the next stitch. Next we are going to chain three. And then we can yarn over and skip two stitches. So one two and then on the third stitch we will make a half double crochet so again we're gonna keep repeating this little pattern so we're going to chain three And then we will yarn over and go into the third stitch. And do a half double crochet. And we will do this all the way until you reach the last two stitches. So once we get to our last little arc, we are going to place one half double crochet into the second from last stitch and then we will place another half double crochet into the last stitch. Okay, so for row number three. We will just chain one and turn our work. And again, we're going to do one half double crochet into that same stitch right there. And then our second half double crochet on top of the other one. I just go into that little chain space right there. Okay, so for this row, we will just begin by chaining one and then we'll yarn over and do a half double crochet on top of the chain three that we did in the previous row. 
and then everything else will be the same so we will go back to chain three and then we can yarn over and do a half double crochet into the previous chain three space that we did and we'll keep repeating this until we get to the end and now we'll meet there So once we get towards the end, we are just going to do the same as we did in the beginning. So we're just going to finish off by chaining one. And then we will just place one half double crochet into the last two stitches. so next we're going to chain one and turn our work around next we are going to begin by placing our half double crochet into the first two stitches and as you can notice we have been doing that at the end and beginning of every row So next we are going to begin by chaining three and we will be skipping that little chain one space right there and we will just go into the chain three space. Okay, so for row number five, we will begin by chaining one and then we will turn our work as always. And then we will begin this row by first of all doing our first half double crochets on the first two stitches. So next we are going to chain one and do a half double crochet on that chain three space. And for the next row we will begin by chaining three and then the next row will be we'll begin by chaining one and so on. Okay, so one last reminder is however you begin your row, um, that's how you should end it. So we began this row by chaining one. So we're going to end by chaining one as well. And then followed by the two half double crochets, of course. So right here, I'm just going to count my rows. So I made two of these crochet patches. Okay, so for the bigger patch, we're going to go all the way to row 28. And then for the smaller patch, we're just going to um, go all the way to row 18. So as you could see, the last row should end with a chain of three. And then we will just chain one 
and turn our work. And then we will just place one half double crochet over that same one and then the other one into the next. And then we will place two half double crochets over each chain three space that we did. And then I will place one half double crochet on the very top of the um, half double crochet that we have. We're going to place two half double crochets over the chain three space that we did and then we will place another half double crochet over the previous half double crochet and we will keep repeating this all the way towards the end and don't forget to do this to the other patch as well So once you're finished, we're just going to finish our last stitch and then you can just chain one and pull your string out and I like to cut a really long tail just so that I can use it to sew it on later. Okay, so once we're done with both of our lace patches, then the next step would be that we are going to grab our old jeans that we don't care much about, and then we are going to turn them inside out. Okay, so next we are going to measure each um, patch in centimeters. And then we are going to subtract one centimeter from the length and the width of the crochet patch. So, so for example, if the length of the lace was 21 centimeters, then we will just draw out 20 centimeters onto the jeans. So yeah, just do that for both sides. So next we are going to mark where we are going to place our rectangle that we are going to cut out. And I like to use a pen because it doesn't bleed through and it goes easily onto the fabric. And since we are um, drawing on the pants inside out, it's not going to show. Okay, so now that I know how big I need to make the rectangle then I will just center it right onto the pants by making sure that each side is equally spaced from the rectangle to the seams or you can also just measure the pants in centimeters from seam to seam and just subtract the width of the rectangle from from that and then um, the measurement that you end up with you can just divide it by two and that is how you find out the measurement of the side of the pants so that your rectangle can be centered perfectly onto your pants. So right here I'm just gonna add another line one on the top and one on the bottom just to add another cool little effect um, to the ripped jeans. Okay, so once you're finished with this side, then we'll move on to the next side and we'll begin um, by doing the same steps all over to the other side. So 
So right on the knee, I'm just going to draw a couple of lines. And um, the only thing that I would say about that is that uh, I would just make sure that your lines match the lines on the jeans. That way you don't end up with a hole like I did. Um, so once you're finished drawing all your lines, I would suggest to um, try your pants on inside out just to see where everything's going to go and see if you're going to like it. And then um, we will just get ready to go to our next step. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, cut the line. Um, just be careful not to cut the little top part up there. I'll show you right now. But okay, so don't cut that all the way up. We're just going to cut to the other side now. And then... Um, once we're done with this little rectangle, then we'll just um, cut from side to side on the top just to have that cool little effect going on on our jeans. We'll see later on when I show you. So as you could see, um, we're just going to cut from side to side. We're not going to cut all the way up from there. And we're just going to do this to both um, the rectangles that we drew out. So just very important, don't cut that little part right there. So yeah, again, we're just cutting the other side and just going straight ahead, not cutting down. And don't forget to cut out your design as well. So I'm just cutting where I just marked right here. So yeah, just be careful. I just, I'm trying to like cut in, it's kind of hard. But anyways, yeah, just follow the line and keep cutting all the lines out. And then we'll meet for the next step. Okay, so the next step will be the fun part. Um, so we're just going to grab our needle and a um, pair of tweezers. And we're just going to like um, kind of distress the little flaps that we made. And we're going to do this um, to all the little flaps that we made. So once the fibers started showing, then I just started to um, tweeze each of the fibers out. So this is how your jeans should look. Uh, as you can see, the one on the left didn't come out so good. And the one on the right came out really nice with the little um, strings showing through. So next I'm just going to grab my liquid stitch. So to place the glue, I'm just going to grab my liquid stitch and just go along the um, sides of the rectangle. So yeah, just along um, where we cut. So next we're going to grab our um, lace and just make sure that the other side is the same as the um, 
lace that you are going to put on. So yeah, I ended up putting it um, backwards, but you can't tell because I did it backwards on the other side. So yeah, just make sure they're both the same on both sides. So I'm just going to begin on one corner and then work my way around by sticking it. So you can just let the glue dry for 30 minutes. Also just make sure that you don't get any glue everywhere like I did. And if you do, just um, grab a wipey and you could just wipe it off right away while it's still wet. So now that the glue is dry, it will be easier for us to sew on the crochet patch. Okay, so um, now, now that we have threaded our needle, we're just going to go into the corner where our um, string is attached. Uh, we're just going to send our needle to the front of the pants. That way we could um, work from the nice side out. So yeah, just pull it out the needle and then we will um, flip our pants inside out. So as you could see, I already sewed all my pants, but I'm just going to show you how I how I sewed them on. Okay, so I'm just going to go where I last left off and then I will meet the point to the other side, making a little gap. And it's as simple as that, and that's what I did all the way around. 